Hi everyone, it's Monica Whelan Shields with the Orca Behavior Institute, and this is the first episode of something new we're going to try called Focal Follows, where we do some video blogs taking you inside some of our research encounters in greater detail. Our most recent encounter occurred on May 4th after more than six weeks without seeing killer whales, and it occurred at Reuben Tart County Park, which is marked here on San Juan Island. And as the whales came into view, we were able to confirm that it was the T-123 matriline, and these guys are common visitors to the Salish Sea. And the family group is made up of four whales currently, uh, the mother, one, T-123 Sydney, and her three living offspring, um, a young adult male, Stanley, a juvenile female, Lucky, and a calf, Darcy. And three of these whales are named after local geographic features, Stanley for Stanley Park near Vancouver, Sydney for the town on Vancouver Island, and Darcy after Darcy Island in Harrow Strait. Lucky has kind of an interesting story behind her name, because back in 2011, um, Sydney and her only offspring at the time, Stanley, actually live-stranded near Prince Rupert, and they were presumably pursuing prey when they got stuck in the outgoing tide. And they were obviously successful in refloating and getting back out to sea, but Sydney was pregnant with Lucky at this point in time. And because she had a successful pregnancy, uh, she got the name Lucky for surviving that incident. Um, and the T-123s are a family group that we love having encounters with. We've had some special encounters, like here's Lucky uh, checking out our first research boat, Serenity, uh, back in 2017. And we affectionately call this matriline the aviators because they love to fly. Uh, so often when we see them, they're breaching and leaping out of the water and they often do what we call a dolphin leap where they're pursuing prey and doing these acrobatic jumps. So uh, we were excited to see what was going to happen with the aviators today on May 4th. And look at that, it did not take long until they started living up to their name and uh, doing a lot of dolphin leaps, breaching, lunging at the surface, and they were circling in one area out in San Juan Channel and clearly were in pursuit of some kind of prey. Um, it's not always that when transient killer whales make a kill that there are these kind of surface acrobatics, but every so often it does happen and there's these dramatic pursuits and so we were interested to see what it was they were after and and what was going on um it's hard sometimes to know whether to shoot photos or shoot video um usually uh, photos are kind of my go-to but as these guys started getting closer to shore i switched to video for a little while because sometimes it captures kind of the essence of the encounter and and the whole experience uh more so than photos so uh, the whales, as I said, were kind of making their way closer to shore. And as they were getting closer, we were able to determine that they were pursuing a stellar sea lion, which some people think is easy for them to take down. But actually, uh, stellars are pretty formidable prey. These guys are tough. They're up to 2,000 pounds. Um, they're all muscle. They've got the teeth and claws of a bear. So it is not easy prey uh, for an orca to take down. And... The pursuit was going on for, for quite a while, and next we'll show you some photos here of the sea lion being pursued by these whales. So there on the right is actually the flipper of the sea lion behind those two dorsal fins. There's the tail of the sea lion up in the air, which they actually spend quite a bit of time upside down in the water so they can keep their eyes on the whales and see how the whales are coming up to them. And we were surprised at how long this sea lion was holding his breath. Um, he was exerting a lot of energy, dodging the blows from these killer whales, but was not breathing all that much. Here he is actually coming up for a breath right under the tail of a killer whale. And then again with Stanley, you can see the sea lion lunging right behind him here. It's always interesting to see how transient killer whales will pursue their prey as I mentioned, sometimes the kills are not acrobatic at all, and that's usually when they're hunting harbor seals. They can make a snag with almost no visible behavior at the surface to evidence that they even made a kill. Sea lions are not that way. It takes quite a while for them to pursue and tire out a massive stellar sea lion. And here you see a lot of circling behavior. The whales are kind of corralling it, keeping it in one area. They're going in and out in singles and in pairs around the sea lion. 
um, probably disorienting it and making him stay in that upside down position to watch what's going on. And then as you watch more of the video here, you'll also see some big lunges at the surface. And we suspect that these are rams into the body of the sea lion. Um, in addition to the loud splashing noise it would make, you could actually hear like a thud as the body of the killer whale was contacting the stellar sea lion. So even though they weren't really grabbing hold of him or pulling him underwater or tearing into his skin at all, we suspect they may have been causing some internal damage as they were ramming the sea lion. But the main thing I think they were doing is just trying to exhaust the prey. And the whales, because there were four of them, could kind of take turns while the sea lion has to be on alert the entire time. And at this point, the event had been going on for more than 45 minutes, probably close to an hour. And the sea lion was visibly slowing down. And we were actually kind of surprised that the whales were letting the sea lion get closer to shore, where we thought he might be able to get away either by hauling out or getting into shallow water. But as the sea lion got closer, we realized that the sea lion actually had a brand on it. And researchers will brand some sea lions to track their movements over their lifetime. And this guy, it turned out, was branded 183R, which was amazing to realize because this is a sea lion that we actually know. And we have ourselves have seen this sea lion over the years in San Juan Channel, both at Whale Rocks and Green Point. And talking to researchers at the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, we got this tracking information of where this sea lion had been seen. The purple mark there is down at Rogue Reef, Oregon where the sea lion was born and originally branded. And here is a closer look at where this sea lion has been seen around the Salish Sea. So it's been sighted in quite a few places over the years. And in, here in 2020, this sea lion 183R is a 17 year old uh, adult male. But here's a photo again from ODFW of this sea lion at just eight months old down in Oregon on the uh, reef where he was originally born. So it's amazing to, in this case, not only know the predators and the killer whales, but know some of the life history of the individual sea lion involved as well. Um, coming up here is another photo provided by ODFW um, showing in the middle there, 183R um, as a territorial breeding male, again, down in Oregon. So it seems that he returns down there to breed and then travels north primarily um, in the winter months and over the last 10 years has been a regular visitor to the San Juan Islands. So suddenly this whole attack uh, took on a whole different feel. And there's one of those dolphin leaps we see from the T-123s. And in this clip here, you can see the whales are getting closer to shore, but you can really see how they're working together as a foursome to circle the sea lion, going in and out and taking turns surrounding it on all sides. And as the sea lion was getting closer to shore, we could really feel the energy kind of ramping up in the attack. And it looked like the whales had still plenty of opportunity to intervene there to kind of head off the sea lion's route towards shore. And we're starting to see more surface activity again. So we thought maybe they were moving in as the sea lion was slowing down to kind of deal the death blow. So we were uh, watching in anticipation. Um, there seemed to be some excitement building among the whales as well with some of those tail slaps, which we hadn't seen earlier in the hunt. More ramming as you see some of those big splashes there. And you can only imagine what must be going on underwater at this point in time. Um, again, all four whales in coordination there circling the sea lion and we couldn't wait to see what was going to happen yet, even though this was a sea lion now that we recognized and uh, we're kind of rooting for the underdog a little bit as well. Um, in a moment here, I'll transition back to some photos to give you a closer look at some of this action as it's just incredible power that these whales have as they move through the water and they make it look so effortless. These huge surface lunges with splashes, you can see the tail um, of the sea lion there. There's a sideways lunge um, from the little one, another lunge through the surface. Again, look at how much water they displace and how easily and just how powerful they are as predators. And back to the live action here, I'll tell you a little bit of what was going on on shore. We were down there, a couple of us from the Orca Behavior Institute, but there were also a couple researchers from the Center for Whale Research and some naturalists uh, from some whale watching vessels. 
And uh, let me tell you, every time Stanley surfaced, he would draw some oohs and ahs from the onlookers. Um, because even though we've seen killer whales so many times, when you start seeing them at close range like this, it's really apparent of just how large they are. And Stanley is an impressive sized whale. But what we're doing at Obi when we're watching an encounter like this is we, as always, are interested in who is present, but also how the whales are moving through their environment and interacting with one another. So in this case, we're documenting that the whales are non-directional. They're staying in one point, um, circling in a single area. Uh, in the case of transients, we're noting that they're in active pursuit of prey and that we can actually determine what the prey is that they're after, which is not always the case. And then we're noting any other surface behavior, including how fast they're traveling, if the whales are staying together as a tight group or not, what their orientation is relative to one another, and other surface behaviors like some of those tail slaps and lunges that we saw earlier on. And so we're coding all this behavior onto our data sheet so later we can go back and categorize the behavior as a broad category um, into what the whales were doing and how they spend their time um, over the course of a season and over the course of many years. And sometimes it's obvious, like in this case, that they're actively hunting or foraging in pursuit of prey, but sometimes it's less so. Like how do you differentiate between looking for prey and traveling? And there's subtle differences in behavior that we can use to categorize these um, behaviors differently in sort of an objective way after the fact based on the things like travel speed and orientation rather than just saying what we think is happening subjectively as the encounter is going on. As we're seeing uh, more and more of these lunges and apparent body slams, uh, we were really wondering when they were going to deal the death blow to this sea lion. Um, action had been going on for an hour or so at this point. Sea lion was getting slower and slower. Whales were getting more and more active. And we were just kind of waiting with bated breath to see what would happen. And uh, I'm sure those of you who weren't there have zero sympathy for us on shore, but our arms were really starting to hurt at this point, uh, holding up the cameras, which was uh, pretty funny. We were talking about how we were out of game shape, so to speak, with these uh, stay-at-home orders that we had not been out in the field lifting our cameras with uh, much regularity. And that's part of the reason that I was uh, switching back and forth between photo and video was uh, give my arm a rest of holding the camera lens up and uh, filming with my iPhone to take some video clips. It was a lot lighter to hold. And uh, I was not the only person on shore doing that, but just kind of a amusing uh, behind the scenes insight as to what was going on. It's really amazing to see that little calf Darcy, who's just a, a little over a year and a half old, right there in the thick of the hunt. And calves seem to be involved right from the get-go, and a sea lion is pretty formidable prey. Uh, Stanley looked like he had some fresh gashes or scratches on him, probably from the sea lion. And the 2,000-pound stellar could inflict some real damage on what's still a pretty small whale on that uh, little calf. Um, Dave Elephant from the Center for Whale Research uh, kind of jokingly commented that a couple times the calf seemed to lose focus and started breaching or tail slapping, maybe uh, celebrating the kill a little bit too early. Um, but it's amazing to see the little whale involved in the pursuit. And uh, here's a look at everybody uh, observing from shore. We were all properly uh, socially distanced, as you can see, but holding up those heavy camera lenses, which, again, I'm sure you guys have uh, zero sympathy for us on that front. Here are some more stills showing some of the action as the whales were getting even closer to shore. And I really love the freeze frame of the water action when these whales are moving through the water with so much power and just what those splashes look like when you're able to capture them with a still camera. Okay, wow, we could not believe the whales let the sea lion get this close to shore. Um, excitement was definitely building as we could start to see the whales and the sea lion underwater when they were this close to the cliffs at Reuben Tart. And it was a really cool vantage point to be a little bit up off the water and kind of looking down at what was going on. And everyone was kind of repositioning here as the whales had drifted a little bit further north. And I'm going to stop talking for a little bit and let you guys uh, listen to some of the audio of what it sounded like. Not only the blows of the whales, which are impressive, but just the excitement of all of us looking on from shore. 
Oh no! Oh no! Another one! Or you can get the brand on it. <laughs> Eight thirty R. <laughs> At this point, the whales had made it all the way into the cove at the north end of Reuben Tart, and the sea lion clearly had some opportunities to either get ashore or get into shallow waters, but strangely, like he is right here, you can see him actually going out towards open water with the whales inshore of him. But they did not seize the opportunity uh, to cut him off, and they let him get back into shallow waters and seem to regroup and kind of make the decision to move on their way, which is just incredible that they can expend this much energy and afford to not get a meal out of it at the end and let the sea lion go. So whether this was a training exercise or merely just some fun and games for them, it's really a testament to how much these whales have to eat right now and how abundant their prey is, that they can um, pursue a stellar sea lion for a full hour and a half and then at the end just kind of decide to let him go and go on their way. The sea lion takes a moment to take a look here and make sure the whales are really going to leave and then a little bit later he did haul out and we were able to see that he didn't have any external wounds at all. He wasn't bleeding or anything which makes us wonder if the whales were really intent on the kill from the beginning. Although of course we don't know what he might have in the way of internal damage because he did take a lot of ramming. And we were questioning a little bit whether the sea lion would ultimately make it. He definitely took a bunch of recovery time, uh, well deserved after all that athletic effort to fend off those whales. And a little bit later in the evening, a friend who lives just around the corner uh, did see this sea lion hauled out in kind of an unusual spot and stayed there overnight resting and recuperating and uh, was on his way the next morning, hopefully healthy and okay. But we'll definitely be keeping an eye out for this sea lion uh, again in the future and we will report if we spot 183R. Um, Hopefully you guys enjoyed our first OB focal follow. We hope to bring you a couple more throughout the course of the season and let us know uh, what you would like to see in future videos like this one. Thanks for watching.